Hi, so in today's video, we are going to solve one of the past papers for psychology. This is paper 1 from February, March 2023 and the component for this paper is 1, 2 and it is for 1 hour 30 minutes. So moving to the first question from this paper, it says from the study by Pepper Burke, Parrot Learning, Alex the parrot was tested for comprehension using three response labels. Two of these were color and shape and now we have to name the third response label that Alex could use. The best technique you can have for solving such past papers is to identify and underline or mark the keywords. So the first keyword I can identify in this question is comprehension. Then the second one is three response labels. And then we, uh, are, are, we are already given two of them, color and shape. What we have to do, we have to name the third response label comprehension we know that in this study comprehension referred to the ability of Alex the parrot to identify the characteristics of the uh, met of the object he was presented with so if two of them are already mentioned uh, color and object sorry color and shape so we are to name the third one and the third one in this study was matter let me just write it down so the third um, comprehension was matter now moving to the second part of this question, it says Alex the parrot had indirect experience of novel new objects before the transfer test. This was to reduce a fair response in Alex. We have to outline the indirect experience of uh, indirect experience Alex had with novel or new objects before the transfer test, right? So if it says outline, so we are going to get one mark for each correct point, right? So basically we have to write two points to gain full marks in this answer. So if we are to write the answer of this question, we have to outline the indirect experience Alex had with novel or new objects before the transfer test. So it was uh, from the study, we know that objects were shelved in Alex view so that he can be um, familiar with them and the second one can be these objects were handled by humans in the laboratory so basically we just have to mention what happened uh, what happened before the transfer test first started so the objects were shelved uh, in if shelved in alex's view sorry i have to write alex's view over here not in alex and these objects were handled by humans in the laboratory so this is what actually happened in this study right so moving on to the next question it says the study by baron cohen et al revised the uh, revi uh, the reading the mind in the eyes test from the original version describe the original version of the reading the minds in the eyes test when again it says describe and the marks are four marks so you have to mention four points to gain four marks you are going to get one mark for each correct point so if i am to write the answer again what the answer can be that the participants were presented with 25 pairs of eyes these pairs were from famous people and then there was a two word choice given before And the two words were semantic opposites. For example, they were happy and sad, so they were very much semantically opposites. So these are four points. Participants were presented with 25 pairs of eyes. These pairs were from famous people. There was a, a two word choice and they were semantic opposites. So if you are to write these four points, you will get four marks in this answer. Then moving on to the third question, it says explain one problem that could arise if children were used as participants in the study by Milgram. 
now what we have to um, identify over here is that it says explain so when the question says explain you are going to get one mark for identification of the problem and then another the second mark for elaboration of the problem and then the third mark for linking it to the study mentioned so the study is milgram so if you are to write about a problem that could that could arise if children's were uh, children were used that can be for example children may not understand what is being asked of them so you are going to get one mark for identifying this problem that children may not understand what is being asked of, asked of them and then uh, the second point is for elaborating and explaining the uh, problem you have identified so you can explain this problem for example by saying that therefore the children may not understand how to use the shock generators so two marks for explaining that uh, why uh, is it a problem if children won't be uh, won't be understanding what is being asked asked of them this would be a problem because they may not understand how to use the shock generators they won't be understanding the whole procedure of this study and as a result the children may have seen it as a game maybe and hence the obedience which was the main aim of the study by Milgram hence the obedience may not be measured so this is why children's might become a problem if they were be used in the study by Milgram. Over here. We have mentioned all three points, so you are going to get three points, full marks for this answer. Then uh, moving forward to the fourth question, it says from the study by Dement and Kleekman, Sleep and Dreams, participants arrived at the laboratory before their usual bedtime. When did the participants arrive at the laboratory? Before their usual bedtime. Now you again have to outline the procedure from when a participant arrived at the laboratory until the end of the study. So basically there are a lot of points, there was a whole a long uh, detailed procedure but you are just to write four points out of it because the question says outline the procedure and it is for four marks so you are going to get one mark per correct point so um, to write the answer for this one there were electrodes we can write about them electrodes were attached near to the eyes of the participants also make sure you do not write about what the instructions were what were the instructions given to the participants that they have to avoid alcohol or caffeine drinks or anything like that because the question says that you have to outline the procedure from when a participant arrived at the laboratory until the end of the study and those instructions about um, coming to coming to the laboratory um, on their normal uh, bedtime and avoiding caffeine caffeinated drinks and all of that those were given before the participants arrived at the laboratory right and in this question they are asking you to write the procedure from when a participant arrived at the laboratory so it started from when the electrodes were attached near to the eyes of the participants and they went to they were asked to go to a quiet dark room The electrodes were tied in a ponytail to allow movement of the head. The EEGs ran continuously. And the participants were woken up at 
several intervals so if you are to write this answer then you will get four marks for this electrodes were attached near to the eyes of the participants they were asked to go to a quite dark room the electrodes were tied in a ponytail to allow movement of head and the eegs ran continuously and the participants were woken up at several intervals then moving to part b of question four outline one conclusion from this study in relation to the eye movement during rem sleep it is important to note that the question is not asking you to outline one of the conclusion from the overall study it is asking you to outline one conclusion from this specific part of the aim which was uh, to find the relationship between the eye movement and the rem dreams so if it is for two marks you are going to get two marks for a full detailed conclusion and one mark if you are writing only a partial or a brief conclusion so uh, let's write a full conclusion over here which can be that eye movements during rem sleep tend to fit with what the dreamer is looking at in their dream which suggest or suggesting eye movements are not at all random so here you are actually explaining the whole conclusion the conclusion from this study was that the eye movements are not random at all right this was one of the conclusion from this part of the aim of this study and how do we know that dreams or oh, sorry the eye movements are not at all random because the eye movements during REM sleep tend to fit with what the dreamer is looking at in their dream if you just write that uh, one of the conclusion from this study is that eye movements are not random at all or if you are to write uh, the first half that eye movements during REM sleep tend to fit with what the dreamer is looking at it doesn't it won't give you full marks it will just give you a partial or the half mark you will just get one mark out of two because you are not explaining it in detail then moving to the fifth question it says from the study by yamamoto et al chimpanzee helping one aim was to investigate like one aim was to investigate whether chimpanzees only help when they can see what another chimpanzee needs to complete a task this was one of the aim of the study we have to outline one other aim so in this question you are going to get two marks for explaining the full aim you have to write the you have to write only one aim but you have to explain it in a way that you get two full marks for it so again what the answer can be that the another aim we know from this study that it was to investigate whether chimpanzees can respond to the needs of another chimpanzee with target helping if you just write that the another aim was to investigate whether chimpanzees can respond to the needs of another you won't get uh, full marks for this because you are not explaining the main part you are not writing it down that it was to investigate whether chimpanzees can respond to the needs of another with targeted helping targeted helping was the main point over here targeted helping If you also write to investigate whether chimpanzees can help each other, it will again give you one mark. So you have to write a proper, full, detailed um, aim that it was to investigate whether chimpanzees can respond to the needs uh, of another chimpanzee with targeted helping. Then moving to the part B of fifth question, the results included data from cannot see condition 
and two can see conditions we have to outline one result from the cannot see condition again if it is for two marks then you are to write a full result with a meaningful comparison you have to compare the cannot see condition uh, the results from the cannot see condition with the can see condition then you are going to get full two marks for this so let's do this um you can either uh, write about an objective uh, objective result which was that an object was offered on 95 percent of the trials this will also give you uh, two marks because you are mentioning the data the number or if you are to write a full meaningful comparison result then you have to write there was no difference in frequency of objects offered in this condition and this condition means the cannot see condition compared to the first can see condition either this can be the answer Or you can also write an object was offered on 95% of the trials. Either of them can be the right answer which will um, result in you getting full marks then we have to outline one result from the second can see condition first we were writing the results from the cannot see condition now we are writing it from the can see condition again outline one result and it is for two marks then you have to explain a full meaningful um, result so you can write if you are to write um, a result with data in it so we can write that there was an object offered in over 97% of trials or you can write a full a meaningful comparison result which will be the three sorry the three chimpanzees offered potential tools more frequently than the non-tool objects so this give you the um, comparison between the tools and the non-tool objects Then question 6 says, from the study by Laney, false memory, describe the background to this study. So again, if it says describe, so you are going to get one mark for each correct statement or the point. And the whole background contains a lot of information. You just have to write the four, uh, any four points, which you can remember the main four points, anything. So first, which I can remember right now is from the bronze uh, study. So let's write about that because that is the most uh, prominent and the easy one. It is about that Bugs Bunny study at Disneyland. So what did bronze all found? Bronze all found. that false memories can be implanted and how did he found out uh, this that false memory memories can be implanted he found that by convincing people that they saw Bugs Bunny at Disneyland because Bugs Bunny is not 
a production of Disneyland, but he was able to convince the people. Hence, he found out that false memories can be implanted. This can be your first point. The negative, uh, the, sorry, the second point can be about the negative false memories. That researchers, there are a lot of other researchers apart from Bronze, uh, who have been successful in implanting. Um, other researchers have implanted negative false memories for some of the actual events and people may have memories for events that never actually happened and then the fourth point can be that these um the researchers these researchers the researchers have been successful in altering our perception of childhood memories so this can be the detail about the whole procedure in the study by Lenny Ayol so let's read the answer once bronze Ayol found that false memories uh, can be implanted by convincing people that they saw Bugs Bunny at Disneyland first point researchers have implanted negative false memories for actual events second point people may have memories for events that never actually happened third point and then the researchers have been successful in altering our perception of childhood memories four points so you just have to simply mention very easy simple plain four points and you are going to gain full marks in such uh, questions then the second part of question six is part b is explain why this study is from the cognitive approach so you have to explain it for two marks it means that uh, you are going to get one mark for a clear assumption from the cognitive approach for mentioning and identifying one of the assumptions from cognitive approach and the second mark will be for linking that assumption to laney's study or linking it to uh, laney's assumption uh, laney's explanation in the background so one assumption from um, the cognitive approach is very simple that we do remember information that is just a very plain and easy assumption from the cognitive approach that we as humans are able to uh, remember our information so one assumption of the cognitive approach is about the way we remember information because cognition uh, cognitive approach explains how our cognitions work to create a way in which we can remember our information so this will gain you one point and the second point is for linking it to Laney's study which can be that this is study by Laney Ayol examined how well people would remember false information so basically this study also examined the way people would remember the information either false or true but it was mainly on the false information but yeah uh, Laney what Laney actually examined was how well people are able to remember what they are being told so this is how your cognitions are working in explaining the way we as humans are um, remembering any kind of information so this is how one of the assumption from cognitive approach can be linked to uh, Laney's study then the seventh question is suggest two real world applications based on the study by Bandura Ayol aggression. Your suggestion must be ethical. Okay. So uh, in the study by Bandura, what happened was Bandura examined how well the children are to imitate the models, the aggressive models. So in, in this, um, there are four marks. So you are going to get one mark for what the application is okay uh, and then the second mark will be for how it will be achieved 
so you are going to get two marks for one suggestion and then you have to mention another real world application so again for the second point one mark will be for what the application is and second point will be for how well it is uh, um, how it will be achieved and this in total is going to give you four marks so let's write the answer for this one the first can be about um children can be taught social behavior okay this will give you one mark and then you have to tell how this can be achieved so a child can observe a model engaging in pro-social behavior and they are likely to imitate this because in the study by Bandura we are told that children actually examined and observed the models and they uh, imitated their behavior so this is how this study can be uh, used in real world applications the second one can be maybe we can write about how children can be taught new skills at a school that they can um, imitate uh, that they can learn by imitating their teachers or we can also write about the tv channels which can be promoted to help uh, uh, children learn about pro-social behavior because we can have some of the models in the tv shows in the children's tv shows to, uh, which are asking them to imitate some kind of good behavior promoting good uh, health behavior or anything but let's write about this uh, school because that is more of a real world application so children can be taught a new skill at a school one mark for this how can it be achieved a child can observe a teacher showing them how to complete a new skill and then are asked to replicate it it is important to mention that the students are asked to replicate or imitate the uh, behavior of the model or the teacher or whoever the mentor is because this is what was actually happening in this happening in this study by Bandura so we have to mention that if we are to use this in, the, in any kind of real world application we have to mention that the children or students have to imitate or replicate the behavior that is the way they are going to learn any new skill or they can be taught about a pro-social behavior so you got your first mark for children can be taught pro-social behavior second mark was for a child can observe a model engaging in pro-social behavior and they are likely to imitate this so two marks for your first suggestion and then coming to the second suggestion first point was for children can be taught a new school new skill at a school and then the second one was for a child can observe a teacher showing them how to complete a new skill and then are asked to replicate it so in total these will gain you four marks then coming to the eighth question this is a debate a question which says two friends Himmet and Urvi are discussing the individual and situational explanation for behavior in relation to this study by Candy Aol. Brain scans and emotions. Himmet thinks this study supports the individual explanation but Urvi thinks that this study supports the situational explanation. Explain we have what we have to do we have to explain one reason why Himmet is correct and one reason why Urvi is correct using evidence from this study. This part is very crucial to note down because this will gain you full marks, right? So um the trick is to first identify the debate that is mentioned in the question so if they are talking about individual and situational debate we have it clear in our minds at what individual and situational debate was or the explanation was individual one was more about the personality of an individual of a person it is it can be it can vary person to person but the situational one is about what we learn from our surroundings it is basically about nature versus it is a kind of similar to nature versus nurture debate because in nature also we are talking about the personality of a person we are talking about what 
what that person is born with and in the nurture debate we talk about what a person learns from their environment or from the situation they are exposed to okay in this one we are talking about the study by candy so make sure you have it memorized perfectly and you have it um, clear in your mind to know what evidences can be used from this study to support himmets and urvi's um, argument so this is for six marks so what happens in such questions is we have to explain the uh, um, reasons right so you are going to get one mark for outlining the side of the debate for let's say if you talk about him at right so basically um, to gain full six marks you have to gain three marks for explaining why himmet is correct and three marks for explaining why urvi is correct if we talk about himmet so you are going to get one mark for outlining the side of the debate basically to explain what individual explanation is and then up to two marks for explaining uh, why himmet is correct giving a reason for uh, for him and then using the evidence from the study so let's say we write about himmet's explanation so first we have to explain what individual explanation actually means so the individual explanation states that we behave because of our personality one mark for this and then we are explaining what it means different personalities will perceive images because in Kelly's study many images were, were shown so we are using um, that example to explain why different personalities will perceive I am so sorry perceive images in different ways and can have different responses this is why this is the explanation for as to why himmet is correct himmet is correct because different personalities will perceive images in different ways and have different responses this tells us that um it is the uh, it is the individual explanation because each individual is going to perceive the images in very different ways and the evidence from the study can be that there were in fact individuals with differences in how they rated the scene all of the individuals rated the scenes shown to them the images which were shown to them in very different ways so first mark is for explaining the individual explanation which is the explanation states that we behave because of our personality second point is for different personalities will perceive images in different ways and have different responses the third one is for that there were individuals with differences in how they rated the scene they had different scores in the ratings of the scenes now coming on to urvi we first have to explain what situational explanation is so first mark will be for explaining it so the situational explanation states that we behave because of our uh, environment or the situation we are exposed to second mark will be for explaining why urvi can be correct because the situation of experiencing similar scenes prior to the study may have affected the results because if there were participants who experienced something similar to what was being shown to them they might take it in a very different way they might react differently they might react intensely and react uh, and rate it as more intense so uh, the in, the evidence from the study can be that there were
it was in fact um, let's write it like this there were in fact a lot of people or a lot of participants who remembered the scenes more accurately than others which can be because they experienced similar events in their lives that is why they were able to remember those scenes more accurately okay so first point is for the situational explanation it states that we behave because of our environment or the situation we are exposed to and then the second point is for the situation of experiencing similar scenes prior to this study may have affected the results the third point is for there were in fact a lot of participants who remembered the scenes more accurately than others which can be because they experienced similar events in their lives now this is the second last question question number nine which asks us to describe the sample used in the study by Pindavan. so we simply have to describe we have to just mention any four points out of the sample of the Pindavan's study so it can be you're going to get one mark for each correct answer right so it can be that the sample was recruited through opportunity sampling this is one criteria or one characteristic of the sampling that all of the participants were recruited through opportunity sampling there were around four fifty 4450 participants okay you have to write proper sentences so what we can do is there were around 4450 participants they were all traveling on a New York subway and then the last point can be there were both males and females you can simply write any four points that you remember from the whole sample. There are many other points such as um, they were traveling between Harlem and Bronx stations. Uh, between They were also traveling between 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in either direction like going from Harlem to Bronx or, from, uh, or back from Bronx to Harlem. And there were 45 percent black participants and uh, the rest of the five were white participants they never knew they were never asked to be the participants so there was no consent taken and all of that you can write anything out of these uh, points but the four i have chosen are recruited they were all recruited through opportunity sampling there were around 4450 participants they were all traveling on a new york subway and the fourth one is there were both males and females then in part b of question number nine you have to explain whether each uh, ethical guideline below was broken in the study by pilyavan or not so the first one is confidentiality if we are to write its answer confidentiality is basically about not uh, mentioning the results of the participants to any other researcher or to any other person who is not the part of this study so confidentiality was not broken it was not broken because we do not yet have any data about if the day if the data or the results from the study were uh, given to any other researcher or if they were um, published by names we do not have any such kind of evidence so we cannot say that this ethical guideline was broken it was not broken why because the results published do not mention the names of the participants or any information which can reveal the identity of the participants 
so as the question is for eight marks you are going to get two marks for explaining if uh, each of the cons each of the ethical guideline was broken or not so i you can get f uh, two marks for confidentiality if you explain it properly that it was not broken because why was it not broken because the results published do not mention the name of the participants or any kind of information which can reveal the identity of the participants if we talk about the informed consent so yes it was broken this guideline was broken why was it broken because the sample was recruited through opportunity sampling and the participants were not aware that they are part of the study hence no consent was taken so we are explaining the guideline properly for this we are going to get two marks so in total up till now uh, you have four marks now the third one is protection from psychological harm so there can be two parts about it for each guideline um um for this one protection from psychological harm you can either write that it was not broken because maybe the partic the researchers made sure that none of the um participant was being accused or they were not being humiliated in the uh, public in front of the public but we do not know if any such kind of thing happened or not you can write it in a positive way but as we do not have any kind of evidence for it i would like to go for a negative side that yes this guideline was broken because the participants might have felt humiliated in front of the public which might affect them psychologically so for this explanation again you are going to get two marks or it's like uh, they might also get psychologically harmed because they might have seen a victim the drunk victim or the black victim and might have uh, sympathized or empathized with them the victim and they might feel like this is what they go through in their daily lives if there is a black victim which is uh, who is not be not being taken care of and no one is helping that uh, black victim a person a participant who is also who also belongs from a black ethnicity might feel like that okay this is what i go through in my daily life this is how people treat me and this might affect them psychologically and then there was a right to withdraw so you can write k this was also broken why because the participants were not told about the study hence they were not given any instructions so they might think that they are responsible for helping in a public environment as they were not given any kind of information or instruction prior to the study so they do not have the choice to uh, withdraw or do something about it because they might feel that okay if they are exposed to some kind of emergency situation they have to help the other person they have the responsibility to help the other person in the public because they were the ones who entered this space so this can be it and then moving to where is the last question which is for it has two it has one mark uh, one part it is for 10 marks it is from the study by andrade 
evaluate you have to evaluate the study by andrade in terms of two strengths and two weaknesses and it says that at least one of your evaluation points must be about generalization so you can use generalization for strength and for weaknesses well i would like to go for um weaknesses but let's just go with the order um the question says that we have to evaluate in terms of two strengths and two weaknesses so let's just talk about the first strength first um if we are to write the proper uh, answer the proper paragraphs for it so first we are going to write that the first is strength of the study is the use of laboratory experiment why is this a strength you have to explain it properly to get full proper marks this uh, it is a strength because this allowed experimenter to control the extraneous variables hence no confounding variables could distort could distort the results and you also have to give example from this study any evidence so for example all the participants were asked to join uh, the study immediately after completing another study which ensured that all the participants were equally bored equally or slightly bored and you also have to mention that why is this a strength like you explain that what happened uh, if it was a laboratory ex uh, experiment then you have to explain that what is strength it actually has that you are supposed to mention at the last um, to get proper uh, to get a proper paragraph for it so what happens is this increases the validity you have to link it to the study obviously you have to give the evidence that why is uh, what happened uh, and then you have to tell that why is this is strength so this can be the first paragraph and then the second strength can be second strength can be the use of quantitative data what happened was the researcher simply compared the scores of both the groups which was an objective way to assess the results this made it possible to have easier and statistical analysis which also increases the reliability of this study so make sure while thinking about the strengths and weaknesses you have to keep a few things in mind that all of the strengths and weaknesses are in the context of either validity reliability standardization and such kind of stuff right so the second strength can be the use of quantitative data why because the researchers simply what happened in this study the researchers simply compared the scores of both the groups which was an objective way to assess the results and then third point that how was it a strength 
um, this made it possible to have easier in a statistical analysis which also increases the reliability of the study so what is happening is reliability is being increased and make sure you are not writing ensured validity or ensured reliability because we still do not know if such kind of stuff either generalizability validity or your reliability is ensured in a study because psychology and psychological studies always have a gray area in between so you can write that in a strengths you can write that something increases the validity or increases generalizability or increases the reliability and in the weaknesses you can write that something can decrease the validity or decrease the reliability or the generalizability so the words that should you uh, that you should be using are increases or decreases not ensured and a statistical analysis is kind of the favorite word of the examiner so like you can use it anytime when you are talking about objective or the quantitative data because it allows a stati statistical analysis which refers to bar graphs charts and all of those things now moving to the um, generalizability to the weakness part also just to mention if you want to write about generalizations in uh, strength you can talk about that it, uh, the sample contained both the genders equally there were 20 males and 20 females which says that you have proper perfect number so that it was it contained both the genders and it can be generalized to both of them it wasn't endocentric or a gynocentric or anything it was complete it had a complete um, division between the genders so if we are talking about the weakness and i use generalizability as one of them so one weakness of this study is its generalizability because there were only 40 participants in this study and they were all from the same participant panel which results in the cultural bias because they are all from the same place they have the same characteristics they have the same knowledge which results in uh, cultural biases therefore you have to explain it properly so therefore the results from the sample cannot be generalized to a wider population which means the study is low in generalizability this is one of my weakness of the study and then the second one can be maybe uh, maybe i can use independent measures design. let's talk about that so another weakness of the study is the use of independent measures design it doesn't allow for a valid comparison as both the groups had different participants there is a chance that people with sharp memory might ended up in the doodling group which caused the whole group to have a higher score
what this does is this decreases the internal validity of the study so basically what uh, problems you have learned about regarding you have learned regarding the independent measures design in your first chapter which was research methods you can write about those uh, but make sure that you are linking it with the study so if i know that the that one of the risk of independent measures design is that people with the same characteristics might end up in the same group so i'm using that to link with the study uh, by andrade so i have written that another weakness of the study is the use of independent measures design it doesn't allow for a valid comparison why because as both the groups have different participants in independent measures design and then i used uh, its uh, problem by linking it within Radha's study that there is a chance that people with sharp memory might uh, end up ended up uh, might have ended up in the doodling group which caused the whole group to have a higher score this decreases the internal validity of the study because these are not the true results you are getting this is not the true comparison it is only because of the uh, participant variable that the doodling group was able to gain more marks so this is all about this paper i hope this was helpful